Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to talk to you about note writing, in specific, the problem of cardiac arrest. I'm gonna walk you through how to document this in the HPI piece of your note, as well as the body of your note, focusing on the problem of cardiac arrest. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about the different etiologies, how to focus on the etiology, how to whittle down your differentials and what's important to include pertinent positives and pertinent negatives. I was really trying hard to keep these videos to five minutes or less, but um, it's just not possible. There's too much relevant information, so I make zero apologies. You're gonna learn so much from this video, so stick around. If we haven't met yet, my name's Bree. I'm a nurse practitioner, and I work in a couple of ICU settings here in Georgia. All right, so here we have our scenario, which is completely fabricated, FYI. This is a 56-year-old, which has extensive pulmonary history, you can see there. He collapsed at work, um, PEA arrest, which is great. You don't always have that identified um, early on. We don't get EMS trip sheets anymore, so that's really a bummer. But in this case, in this scenario, we do know it's PEA. We know the ROSC was 30 minutes, and we know the story is that he's had worsening dyspnea and cough, which further lends credit to your theory that this is a respiratory to cardiac arrest. He was tubed in the field. I always include that in that piece of it. Um, in, in any patient who's in respiratory failure on the vent, you always want to include when and where they were tubed. Then I progress on to say that they arrived at the ICU with this set of problems and this diagnosis already. The fact that there is already anoxia on imaging is a very poor prognosis, in particular when it's associated with myoclonus or seizure. So that is really important to include on there. This is going to give you an overall picture of you know, how long this person was in arrest and what the eventual fallout of it will be. Um, then I go on to say what we're doing from here forward. We're going to start targeted temperature management and also um, how sick he is. He's on multiple pressors already and that we have um, brain and heart imaging pending. It's very short, very concise, gives you a, a complete picture of what's going on without going into too many details in the HPI piece of the note. Then we come down here to the problem list. So I've included just a sketch, just a rough sketch of the things that you should include in this piece of the note, and then we'll write through it together, all right? So the first thing you wanna do under any problem is identify the etiology of the problem. So in this case, we know what the problem is. Um, PEA arrest. Um, I think this guy has pneumonia, um, but I cannot say that there is not a component of uh, heart failure exacerbation because as you'll see in just a minute, our x-ray is going to suggest some pulmonary edema. Um, however, the ABG that I'm going to include um, does not have hypercarbia, but does have hypoxia, which also kind of sways you towards thinking that this is not an exacerbation of the COPD, but more likely um, hypoxic respiratory arrest related to either the pneumonia or the heart failure or both. A lot of times it's you know, multifactorial. Now, if you'll look at the line above, I talk about the nature of the arrest. You always want to write whether or not you think it's respiratory or true cardiac arrest and the etiology for that. So that, whether it is respiratory or cardiac in nature, is going to change the pertinent positives and negatives that you're going to include in your note. When you are identifying the etiology for your arrest, it's either going to be respiratory or cardiac, and you just need to go back to your H's and T's if it's PEA and run through what your the most likely explanation for this arrest is and focus in on those pertinent positives and some negatives that could be included that may sway you away from that. You have to include that as well. But you don't, if you think very strongly this is hypoxic respiratory arrest, which is what this scenario is, I don't need to include a bunch of differentials that would lead me down the path of BFib. And I don't necessarily need to go down the route of all the other H's and T's. You could say all of the things that would lead you through the H's and T's 
but it's going to be a really long note and really hard to read. So while that kind of stuff is what you're taught in school and that's the kind of stuff you need to do for boards to um, think along those lines, in the real world you want to be as concise as possible because you're going to lose your reader. So focus primarily on the pertinent positives and negatives that lead you down the path towards what you think the problem is. I think it's important to include that line about the multi-system organ failure because it again tells you how bad it already is from the get-go. And these next few lines are just going through my diagnostics that are going to lend weight to my theory that this is respiratory arrest, most likely secondary to pneumonia. You're often going to have an x-ray with a mixed picture and it's going, <laughs> real life is not uh, nice and neat and wrapped up with one sure diagnosis. It's often very cloudy and can be multiple etiologies. That's just the reality, people. So again, this is all stuff that's telling me, yeah, I think this is probably pneumonia. The procalcitonin is going to be, you know, just moderately elevated. You're often going to see leukocytosis in the setting of cardiac arrest, uh, particularly if they've had a STEMI. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's infection, but it it's just another piece of the puzzle. So this line right here is really not a very strong indication for pneumonia, but again, I've got to include these pertinent pieces of data. So this information is all telling me whether or not I think this is heart failure, and neither of these indicate such. You always need to include your ABG in this piece because it tells you so much information. It tells you if they're acidotic. In this case, it tells me that he's not hypercarbic, which leads away from a diagnosis of COPD exacerbation. He is hypoxic, which does lend more credence to the pneumonia versus heart failure. That's what you tend to see on ABGs for those particular problems. Now I'm going to include what I'm seeing diagnostically that indicates the prognosis is poor. Okay, so that wraps up my assessment piece of the problem. Now I'm going to move on to the plan piece of the problem. This person arrested because of a respiratory etiology. So I'm not going to include the management of that under the cardiac arrest piece. Sometimes when you're writing these notes, there's a blurring of the lines. When you chart by problem list or diagnosis, things kind of cross over a whole lot. So you have to try and keep things as separate as you can in your mind so that each problem doesn't include the same information over and over and over again. It's just it's just not clean like that. Therefore, my plan for the cardiac arrest is not going to be super extensive because the big thing after a patient has had cardiac arrest is to stabilize the heart and included in that you can put a little bit of the management of the problems that result from the arrest. So the multi-system organ failure, the brain issues, we always include targeted temperature management under the cardiac arrest piece because you're doing it because of the arrest, although you could kind of feed it into the neurology section um, slash encephalopathy section, whichever it is, however you're going to chart that. But it, again, there gets to be a ton of crossover. So I will include brief stuff that tends to go with cardiac arrest in this section. So because I've already said that he is possibly seizing, I need to indicate that I'm addressing that, although I'm going to also probably put this under encephalopathy section. Initiating the targeted temperature management, and most importantly of all, ongoing discussions with the family. And that's really it for the cardiac arrest plan of it, because after they've arrested and you've gotten the pulse back and the heart's going again, now your plan is to A, diagnose, and B, keep it going, and C, manage the fallout of the problems. And those will all come under different problem lists. So obviously this is going to be tailored based on what your problem is. If you think they arrested from hyperkalemia, you're going to be addressing the pertinent positives and negatives for hyperkalemia there. And you're probably going to also, under the plan piece, talk about whether or not you're doing dialysis and whether or not the potassium has resolved. Because again, it's part of what caused the problem. And that's it, people. You do not need to include a diatribe of 
every single pertinent positive and negative for every single possible cause of cardiac arrest. None of you, you don't need to include all the H's and T's and whether they're positives or negatives. You don't need to include, I honed in on the fact that I think this is respiratory and that's all I talked about. I didn't talk about anything that would relate to VFib or VTAC like EKGs, troponins, whether or not I think there's a STEMI here. None of that did I include in here. Now, you wouldn't necessarily be wrong for including that because sometimes you want to make a strong case for the fact that this is PEA versus VFib, VTAC, because those are, again, different etiologies that you've got to treat differently. But it, it, it gets to be too wordy and too much, in my opinion. You're going to develop your own style, your own technique for doing this, and you're either going to be the kind of person who likes a lot of data or likes to be more concise. And I guarantee you, no matter how you choose to, to chart it, someone's going to come behind you and say, that's not the right way to do it. Because so much of this is highly individualized. I say you just develop the technique and the style that works for you. To me, there are two main purposes in writing a note. One is to help you work through your differentials and for you to formulate your own um, diagnosis and plan. And the second thing is for you to communicate to all of the other people involved in this person's care what your likely diagnosis is and what your plan of care is. So that's it. That's one example of what a cardiac arrest note might look like. This could have a gazillion different formats based on what your problem is and how you choose to chart. That's all there is to it. Easy as pie, right? <laughs> It gets better with time. Like everything else that I tell you guys, it gets better with time. Just practice. I would also encourage you to check out my other video, Note Writing 101, where I talk about how to write a general note, a general H&P note. And I also have another video that talks you through how to work up an admission and present it to your attending because that's always super nerve wracking. So go check them out.